This is a recording of our playbook. Download the playbook, configuration spreadsheet, and ABA lab environment from our website. Welcome to our whiteboard drawing, Enterprise 20, Dial Plan Build, Internal Dial Plan, Site Codes and Patterns. In this drawing, we'll look at internal dialing, including site codes, patterns, and class of service. Let's start with a quick overview and review. For an overview of the Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, see our drawing, Dial Plan Build Overview. Remember our objectives for the Dial Plan from the discussion in Dial Plan Overview. In this drawing, we focus on the first objective, users' internal numbers are their external number, but with 8 instead of the area code. We'll also keep an eye on the third objective, call forwarding works like users expect. If they can forward a call to a number, then callers will be redirected to that number. See end user training for a look at this from the end user perspective. We discussed internal dialing in background drawings. Internal dial plan part one, configuring extensions on lines, and internal dial plan part two, problems with configuring extensions on lines. This playbook provides a solution for internal dialing, how to assign site codes and directory numbers, partitions calling search spaces, and translation patterns for internal dialing. Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build Incoming Call Handling provides a solution for incoming call handling, incoming call routing, and incoming calling party settings. We use a variable length on net dial plan as discussed in section 9.9 .9 of the UC 9.0 SRND. Within a site, users can dial using four or five digits, abbreviated dialing, as desired at each site. Between sites, users dial an access code followed by a site code and the destination's extension. Off net calls require an access code followed by a PSTN number. We'll discuss the Cisco validated designs. We'll talk about this one, the Cisco BE6000 CVD, and this one, the telephony using Cisco UCM CVD. We are using a solution from here. These were available when we developed this drawing. Our first consideration, the story we tell users about internal numbers and how to dial them. See our drawing and user training. We want this story to be as simple as possible. For the UC9.x SRND variable length on net dial plan, this is the best story. Users have just one number, and there are three ways to dial that number. External or outside callers dial 1 902 696 7751. Internal callers dial 8 696 7751. And within the same site, abbreviated dialing, we dial 7751. Outside callers will know whether the one is required or not, so we don't need to worry about that. Everyone can easily understand this. There is no better outcome for an internal dial plan using site codes. We think this is a bad story. Users have two numbers, one if called from an outside phone and another if called internally. We haven't even talked about mobility and already users have multiple numbers. We don't want to start our Cisco collaboration deployment this way. Unfortunately, the North American numbering plan is ancient. It was developed in the 1940s. For perspective, around the same time in 1946, the first general purpose electronic computer was developed, the U.S. Army's Ballistic Research Laboratory's ENIAC. In 1981, legend has it that Bill Gates said, 640K ought to be enough for anybody. The NANP was in its fourth decade at that time, and that was 33 years ago. We can only do so much with such old technology. You have two choices for your internal dial plan. Number one, shoot for the best story for the most numbers of users. Number two, don't bother, users just get two numbers. Enterprise 20 chose the first option. It's no more complex or difficult than the second to deploy. We'll show you exactly what to do to get the best results for your users. The best result isn't going to be a perfect result. It can be a quite good result though. 
especially for smaller BE deployments. Your idea of the best story may be different than ours. That's fine, as long as you build your dial plan to match your story. We'll show you how to build a dial plan to match our story. Here's an exercise. Describe what you think is the best story to tell your users about internal numbers and how to dial them. What story are you currently telling your users? Do the two match? See our end user training drawing to see how we tell the story to our users. Let's talk about site codes. Here's what we looked at in the background drawings. As discussed in the SRND, for internal dialing, we'll dial using an access code plus a site code plus an extension. We use 8 as the access code for intersite dialing. We'll make the site code plus the extension always be seven digits, a familiar format for everyone. The extension represents the number you would dial at a site to reach another number at that site. At large sites, we used a two-digit site code plus a five-digit extension. At small sites, we used a three-digit site code plus a four-digit extension. We assigned site codes. We didn't use site codes starting with a zero or one, or site codes like 911 or 411. We used the patterns 2x through 5x to give us up to 40 large sites, and the patterns 6xx through 9xx to give us approximately 400 four-digit sites. Seven-digit numbers starting with zero or one or with 911, or any service code for that matter, look strange and we won't use them. Enterprise 20 started with three sites, Toronto, Hamilton, and Winnipeg. Toronto uses five-digit dialing, and Hamilton and Winnipeg use four digits. The external phone number mask at Toronto is 416-555-7XXX at Hamilton 905-555-40XX and at Winnipeg 204-555-40XX. The three sites are part of the 10-site Enterprise 20 deployment. Internal numbers can be dialed using 8 plus a familiar 7-digit format. We didn't configure lines with local extensions. Instead, we configured lines using the 8-digit access code plus site code plus extension. All numbers are in the internal partition. For example, Toronto line 57001 is configured as 8 plus 55 plus 57001 in the internal partition. The Hamilton line 4001 is configured as 8601-4001 in the internal partition, and the Winnipeg line 4001 is configured as 8602-4001 in the internal partition. For extension 57001 at the Toronto site, the directory number will be 8555-7001 in the internal partition. We have a line text label to indicate the local extension and any text we'd like to display. And the external phone number mask is 416-555-7XXX. That was background to explain concepts. Here's what we did for the Tensite Enterprise 20 deployment. Here are the sites and DID ranges for Enterprise 20. These ranges are configured in the multi-site PSTN simulation. Numbers in red represent problems we'll discuss. For our users to get the best story, we need to make the site code the same as the office code. How hard could that be? This is what we would like to do. We want the internal number to be the external number with the area code replaced with an 8. Effectively, our users deal with just one number. We believe this is the best result for our users. For Enterprise 20, we matched as many sites to the corresponding office codes as possible. Only five out of 10 sites worked. Because we have multiple sites with the same office code, 
and another problem with eights and nines that we'll talk about soon. Our result is so bad because we baked in problems. What can you normally expect? Here was our original scheme for sight codes. We use this to explain basic concepts. Using five-digit dialing is a problem if we are mapping office codes to site codes. Two-digit site codes use up an extra nine office codes. But we already had sites using five-digit dialing in the 5x range, so not much we can do about that for those sites. New rule? Don't use two-digit site codes with five-digit dialing if possible. In future, we'll assign multiple three-digit codes to large sites if necessary. Office codes don't start with zero or one, so no problem there. You won't see 911 or 311 or 411, etc. used for office codes either. What can you normally expect for overlapping office codes where all site codes are three digits? This is the same as the birthday problem. For a given number of people, what are the chances that two of them have the same birthday? We asked Dr. Math about this at this address. Dr. Math said this about birthdays. In our case, we should use 800 instead of 365, but our calculator won't do 800 factorial. We approximated based on results using 100 instead of 365. We'll talk about those results soon. Dr. Math would probably have a fit. We don't really care about math. Bottom line. The chance of a successful mapping of office codes to site codes for small BE deployments is very good. This scheme will scale to a few hundred sites. The more sites, the worse the results. Once you have hundreds of sites, you need to think about E.164. What does the Cisco Validated Design have to say about site codes? The BE6000 Design Guide suggests two-digit site codes with four-digit extensions for enterprises with 90 sites or less. We have issues with the CVD suggestions. The first is the CUCC exclusion of zero from the first digit of two-digit site codes. Look at these numbers and see if you can tell what's wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with these numbers. But based on the CUCC required format, you'd have to do something like this for users at a site whose office code was 805. That's crazy talk. We wouldn't do this to these users without a good reason. Another issue. Migrating from two-digit to three-digit site codes is not simple, not fun, and you don't want to do it. If there's any chance at all that you'll grow to more than 90 sites, 100 really, then don't even consider the 8SS-XXXX format. We believe every enterprise should aspire to have more than 100 sites. If your enterprise has 50, 60, or 70 sites or more and is growing, then using the 8SS-XXXX format is crazy talk. Yet another issue. What are we going to tell our users about their internal numbers? For three-digit office codes, we say, your internal number is your external number, but with an eight instead of the area code. For the 8SS-XXXX format, you have to start counting digits. Your internal number is 8, followed by the last six digits of your external number. That's clumsy. These things matter. And one final issue. Far more numbers will be mangled using the CVD two-digit site code suggestion. The chance of the last two digits of the office code overlapping is much higher than the chance of the entire office code overlapping. Our calculator will do 100 factorial, so these are good numbers. Our calculator can't do 800 factorial, so these are guesses. We can't think of a single advantage, other than it's a shorter number, for an internal dial plan with this format, 8SS-XXXX. We believe there's only one reason to use this format. It's already implemented and changing isn't worth it. Another way to say this is, the damage is done. We believe no one should ever consider the 8SS-XXXX format. Let's talk about the Cisco UCM validated design. The Cisco UCM design guide has an option for three-digit site codes that makes more sense. We use that one. 
Here is an exercise. List the area and office codes for all the sites in your enterprise in two columns in a spreadsheet. Sort the rows by office code. Assign office codes to be site codes. For each duplicate, for the smallest site, change digits on the left to create a new site code. This produces the best site code result for the most users. You can't do any better than this. Bonus, it doesn't get any easier than this. Using the results from the previous exercise, build a table indicating the site codes and site names for each of your sites, like shown in the table below for Enterprise 20. This table is from the Sites tab in the Initial Dial Plan Configuration Information version 4.2 spreadsheet. Often you have something already deployed and you can't really change the site code assignment. The Enterprise 20 solution for internal dialing will work regardless. We've generalized the solution to support requirements you might have, such as mixing four-digit and five-digit dialing. Remember, if you are doing a new dial plan, think about your users first. This drawing is continued in Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, Site Codes and Patterns, Part 2.